I actually don't know the geopolitical angle right now on Mount Kailash. I believe you're not allowed to go there yeah. as a tourist anymore. Yeah. And also, also uh, what uh, Kailash is one of the peaks where you cannot climb to the top because all the religions which consider Kailash as uh, divine. So it's the standard belief that uh, you are not to uh, climb to the top. So there's no mountaineering also allowed in Kailash. So you can climb the Everest, which is a taller peak. Kailash, no, there's only a limit till which you can go and then you can do circumambulation production and all that. What do you think is actually up there? What will you be able to physically see Shivji because they say it's the abode of Shivji and Parvatima? So what is what do you mean by physically seeing a devata? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you see a man wearing a leopard skin with a cobra on around his neck, meditating? A deity is fundamentally without a specific form. It's an energy. It is no physical presence. Okay. Okay. So like you and me, we have a physical solid presence. So Devata is not something that has a physical solid presence. It can manifest itself as physical solid presence. It has a lot of different abilities. That is why we worship Devatas in the first place. Uh, but they do not fundamentally have a physical presence. They don't like to come into the physical plane because it curtails their powers. It curtails their freedom. Okay. One thing. The other thing is that the image that you have of a Devata uh, uh, for us, for example, like Lord Shiva, etc. Uh, and this becomes very important. This image is also inspired by the deities onto the minds of the rishis and the great masters. You mean the rishis and the great masters drew it out artistically? Whether they drew it out or they reflected in their mental eye. Mm. Okay, This is how Shiva is to be. But which Shiva? There are so many versions of Shiva. Do you know that when we, um, so when we, uh, uh, there's a belief, for example, that the Shiva that uh, uh, we kind of worship uh, is the one who resides in Kailasa. Okay. He's the one. Then there is one Shiva that is even beyond, that is Parashiva. Just like I was saying Parashakti, that being can also be Parashiva. Parashiva is beyond forms, beyond any conception. Okay. And almost nobody can worship Parashiva. Let's just put it this way. That which you cannot even imagine, how are the how the hell are you going to worship? You have no idea what it is. Okay, it doesn't even demand your worship. By the way, that is the interesting thing. What is it up to? Nothing, in its own delight. It's just in a format of ecstasy, for lack of better words. Because we can't describe in words what it's up to. From there, we have the Shiva who is in Kailash. Okay, Lord Shiva, whom we worship. So he is, the scriptures mention that he is one of the ones who called the Sri Kanta Rudra. Okay, he's one of the forms of Rudra. So, so in, for example, as I was uh, just now mentioning in Kashmiri uh, Shaiva philosophy, they believe that in Satya Yuga, uh, one form of Lord Shiva appeared, which is the Swachandanath. They call him Swachanda Bhairava. He had 18 arms and uh, certain manifestations and certain figures. He came and he gave the Shaiva Tantra to the world. It's it's like a, the philosophical path of worshipping Shiva, uh, which can benefit the world. Okay, And then this knowledge was also lost for some time. Then again in Kailash, Sri Kantarudra came. He called Rishi Durvasa one day and he told him that I am giving you this knowledge. You disseminate this knowledge into the world of men so that it benefits them. So from there, multiple lineages of Shiva came out. Okay, So there was three primary philosophical uh, manifestations of Shiva came out, which is that one is the, they call the Shaiva Siddhanta, which is uh, today popular in South India, where uh, it's a dualistic worship. Okay, so dualistic means there is the Devata you worship and you are here. There is always a difference between the two. Okay, so uh, that is dualistic. Then there is the, um, achha, these these were given through the Agamas. Agamas are Shastras, texts, which have come, Agama means something that has come earlier. Okay, so 92 Agamas were given. Of these, uh, there were Shaiva Agamas, there were Rudra Agamas. Rudra Agamas is how to worship Rudra. So, equation with Rudra has to be uh, partially monistic, partially dualistic, which means, it's very interesting, which means that there is a duality. You are not him, but there is some connection also. There is At one point, you are also like him. Okay, this is called as partially dualistic, partially monistic. And then the third set of Agamas, which is Bhairava Agamas. Shiva in his form as Bhairava, he is monistic. Monistic means eventually you will become the state what is called Bhairavoham. You are Bhairava. Eventually, not on day one, 
eventually at the high stage let me just say no one spoken about this concept of shiva with so much depth on the show ever and that's why i was looking forward to this conversation um okay basically three forms no there are more <laughs> forms of shiva i am just giving the large format of it okay you are also kind of explaining how to evolve yourself as a human yes. to absorb it you are explaining it from that perspective and also to tie it back to the previous point from where this came out this stream of conversation so each of these forms has its own depiction dhyana bhairava has a particular form okay he is terrifying shiva is shanta is very calm and there is the format which is worshipped in south india and lot of places soma skanda where shiva is there parvati is there two children are there it's family man okay very happy family man sitting down you are worshipping just bhairava is just the opposite sort of is that the ferocity is there he holds the trishula is like somebody who is in a very is in a terrifying form okay the word bhairava itself has various meanings one of the meanings is that he is a little terrifying 